It's not as simple as it seems when looking at the latest 4.5 characters, and this is the best time to investigate the whole situation about Chiori, Featured Banners, and the Chronicled Wish summons. So, despite the fact 4.5 update is a filler patch, a couple of things have definitely made this update very interesting, both in a good and weird way. And so, let's first talk about Chiori's potential, and then in a moment, I will also deconstruct the Chronicled Wish banner and explain how it wants to bait you. Now, Chiori is going to be the only new 4.5 character. She's a 5-star Geo Sword unit, and she's basically a mix of Albedo and Kaching. You see, when Chiori uses her skill, she will teleport in a short range, deliver an upward blade slash, and then summon this doll called Tomoto. The doll will then remain on the field and unleash coordinated attacks. I counted the seconds and it seems like this attack happens roughly every 3.5 seconds, so it's not fast and it also seems to focus on doing single target damage. Maybe it has a little AoE, but I will need to test this when Chiori is finally released. However, the point is, she teleports with the skill and leaves behind a doll to deal what I assume to be off-field damage, since you won't linger for too long on the field with Chiori. Chiori. Unless, and here's the thing, for a brief moment when Shiori does the upward slash with her skill, you can press normal attack button and it will then provide Geo Infusion to Chiori's normal attacks for some time. So this means you could potentially play her as an on-field Geo damage dealer for a brief moment. But what's even cooler, instead of pressing the normal attack, you can just press the skill again, and this will immediately force you to switch to the next character in the team. And as we can see from the footage here, Chiori teleports with the skill, and mid-air, Navi appears, who then delivers a plunge attack, while at the same time, the doll is still summoned. What's even better, if you do this, her doll will execute additional coordinated attacks. So I imagine if you play her as off-field damage dealer, this will be the preferred method of using her skill, instead of gaining Geo Infusion. Now, I'll admit it, one doll on the field would be pretty underwhelming, so why not have two instead? Well, that's actually possible because whenever Chiori uses her skill, if there's another Geo Construct on the field, or if one is created after the skill, she will summon an additional doll. You can see here Zhongli aggressively asking his enemies to share memories about the Matthew's wine, and when he summons a pillar, another Chiori's doll shows up. This is great, and I'm not talking about my crappy joke, but the fact that it's very easy to quickly summon two dolls and let them do their coordinated attacks against enemies. And get this, Chiori is a dual damage scaler. Her multipliers will depend on her attack and defense, which is pretty interesting because this means she can take advantage of both Benny's and Goro's buffing, although this obviously depends on the fact if her skill can be snapshotted, which is a unique technique that allows you to lock in the buffs for attacks that have a duration. Now, not much has been said about her burst during the livestream, but hopefully it's also dual scaling. I imagine it's just something she'll want to do quickly as a fast front-loaded damage, while the rest of the damage accumulates from her dolls while she's off-field. Still, there are a couple of concerns that I've seen circling around in the community. First, will her constructs break easily as Albedos when some boss like Mago Genki just steps onto them? Or will they stand strong like Ito's Ushi? This little dude is not only cute but also reliable, so hopefully these dolls are the same. The other thing, of course, has to do with the three construct limit because in this game, you can only have three constructs active at the same time. Now, it's no secret Chiori will be good in Ito teams, and in some cases, you could potentially use both Albedo and Chiori when playing Ito. However, that's gonna be a total of four constructs. Two dolls from Chiori, one flower from Albedo, and one cute Ushi when Ito throws it. I can easily see some bad rotations where you switch to Ito as the last damage dealer and he summons Ushi, who will then force either Albedo's flower or Chiori's doll to disappear. I honestly hope Hoyo decides to increase the construct limit here, because an even worse scenario would be Zhongli showing out out of the blue, so he can just put that juicy shield on my team, but since the pillar is summoned, it could potentially force some older constructs to disappear due to the limit. Obviously, Zhongli's shield is usually applied at the start of rotation, so most likely it would get removed by Ushi when Ito throws but still, that limit with multiple characters who can produce constructs can be very annoying. There's also another uncomfortable question we need to ask ourselves. Will Chiori power creep Albedo? Because she does function quite similarly as him. Obviously, Albedo can provide elemental mastery boost, which is a niche but sometimes a nice thing to have. However, he is a split scaler. Technically, it kinda gets fixed with his second constellation, but overall, Chiori is a dual scaler, so she benefits from both defense and attack compared to Albedo. I just hope she doesn't end up becoming Albedo's, because that would be a bummer. 
Either way, Chiori looks like a pretty interesting character. It's not clear yet how good she is, and we'll need to wait for her official release to see the damage multipliers, but overall, let's hope Warverse can gracefully introduce her into an ever-expanding pool of 70 plus characters, because, in my opinion, she looks really good, or should I say, elegant. I know, I know, it's supposed to be elegant. Me, not so good English, some Timis. Although, you know what else is not that convincing? Chronicled Wish. So, let me get this straight. We finally gain a third banner in 4.5 update. It contains multiple weapons and characters we can choose from, but it has a 50-50 that will ruin you if you don't prepare for it. Okay, so here's the thing. In 4.5, we will get this massive banner. You can see Eula, Albedo, Diluc, Mona, Jean, and Klee as the featured characters. While there's also a bunch of 5-star weapons, including Hunter's Path, the Bacon Claymore, and Broken Pines. What you'll be able to do is choose one of these as an item you want to wish for. If you pick one of the 5-stars, there's a 50-50 chance you will get either the character or one of the 5 others. And if you decide to choose the weapon, then again, 50-50 chance to get the selected weapon, or one of the other 10 weapons. Now, you might be thinking, all I gotta do if I lose a 50-50 is just go for it again. Yes, kinda. You see, when you lose the 50-50, this banner will reward you with one fate point. And only because of this fate point, the next 5-star summon is going to be guaranteed as your selected item. But here's the painful part. When this banner disappears and another Chronicled Wish banner shows up, if you had the Fate Point unlocked, it will not carry over to this new banner. Your wishes towards the pity will carry over, but not the Fate Point. This is a huge bait, because basically, if you don't use the Fate Point to obtain your chosen 5-star, on the next banner, you lose it, and you're again gambling for the 50-50 chance to get the new chosen item. And you wanna hear something else? This banner also uses intertwined fates. Yes, the wishes that are needed for featured banners. Now, let me be the devil's advocate for a moment and admit the fact that this banner could be a nice way to score some weapons or units you don't have, but you better make sure to bring enough wishes to bypass the unlucky 50-50 luck. On the flip side, if you do lose it, it will be one of the characters in the pool if you chose a 5-star unit, or one of the weapons if you chose a 5-star weapon. For example, I want to get Albedo, but I lose my 50-50 and instead I get Klee. Okay, so that's another limited unit, but for this banner, three of the units here are from standard banner so it's very likely you might just get one of them, and I'm not sure how happy you're going to be because it depends if you're interested in them or not. The same can be said for weapons, but they are kinda worse. The pool is much bigger, only 3 of the weapons are from limited banners, while others come from standard pool, so you're a lot more likely to lose a 50-50 to a standard weapon than a limited one. But I will say this, if you want a featured 5-star weapon really badly, this is going to be the best place to wish for them, since you just need one fate point compared to the scam that is the featured weapon banner, which requires two fate points to guarantee the 5-star. Now, one last thing to mention here, it's not clear how long will the duration be for this banner, it says 4.5 Chronicled Wish, so hopefully it's going to last for the whole update if you want to pull from it, but don't take my word for it just yet, let's see how it looks like when the update arrives. And on top of that, the developers mentioned that when this banner rotates, it will only include characters if they appeared at least 3 times on featured banners, but at the same time, have not appeared recently. I mean, it's a bit of a doozy, but I already saw some people compiling lists of potential 5 stars we could expect from future Chronicled Wish banners. And I think that's pretty cool to see more characters show up. At the end of the day, this banner is basically just another option for you to spend wishes on. And for now, I would say Mondstadt lineup of characters is pretty weak because you can still get a standard character. However, if they continue the theme of regional characters, if we wait until Inazuma or Sumeru Chronicled Wish shows up, then it would be pretty awesome to pull from a larger pool of featured characters. However, the most important takeaway here is that Fate Points will not carry over to the next banner, so if you do decide to wish for, you want to make sure to have enough wishes if you end up losing 50-50. That or wait for a Chronicled Wish which has a good pool of featured characters or weapons you'd be happy to lose a 50-50 to. Overall, when it comes to Banner Showdown, I would say Phase 1 is pretty niche, because both Chiori and Ito work best in Geo teams. Maybe Chiori will be good in double Geo comps as well, 
But come on, Phase 2 contains both Kazuha and Nouvellet, two powerhouses for team comms. Obviously, if you love Geo, Phase 1 characters are really exciting here, but on the other hand, Nouvellet has proven himself to be a superb unit, not just with Farina, but also in terms of how easy his playstyle is and how much value he delivers. And as for Kazuha, the Maple Syrup Samurai, his previous banner was last year in June, so this is a rare opportunity to grab him, especially since he's one of the most utilized buffers in the entire game. And of course, then we have the Chronicled Wish banner. I don't know, it's up to you to decide if you think it's worth going for. I personally will not pull on it, but I am very interested to see how its future lineups will look like. Either way, don't spend money if this puts you in a bad financial situation. It's only 3D characters we're talking about here. It's not worth eating instant noodles for months afterwards. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video and I'd really appreciate it if you could press the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you very soon.